law is a rule of conduct developed by the government or the society over a certain territory so here you will understand what is the meaning of contingent contract then what is the meaning of quasi contracts so in the internals one two chapters will be covered under for internals one that is contract and contractual capacity so under this students you are going to study the definition of information what is an information right a warm welcome to all dear students for the introduction class of business law 6th semester bcom myself george william a commerce faculty vidyashrama mysore dear students today i am going to discuss with you regarding the syllabus part as well as about your marks allotment for each chapters then the internals part right as well as the question paper pattern now let us see about the syllabus in the syllabus we have six units the first unit is of contract second unit it is of contractual capacity third unit it is contingent contract fourth unit it is related to intellectual property rights and cyber law then fifth unit information technology act 2000 and the last unit sixth unit is related to competition protection act 2002 so these are the six units you need to study in this particular semester about business law now students you can see here the first unit under first unit the unit name is contract under this unit we have sub topics that is the concept of law that is the meaning of law then sources of law then mercantile law agreement then contract that is the definition of the contract and essential of a contract then legal rules as valid offer and acceptance and termination of an offer now concept of law see first we should understand what is a law law is a rule of conduct developed by the government or the society over a certain territory right so explain to you again what is law law is a rule or it can be said as a set of rules which is been developed by the government or a society over a certain territory now what is a contract law so contract law is nothing but it seeks to regulate the formation and the application of contracts now when a contract is been made and for that contract if it has to be under law then the law should be governing on that particular contract so this law defines the essential elements what are the important elements of a valid contract that particular agreement should be a contract then it should be a valid contract or it should be a lawful agreement or you can say a lawful agreement a lawful uh, lawful agreement or valid agreement then only it can become a contract so in case one of the parties breaches the clause that means in case see in a contract there will be two parties one the promisor and the promisee right in that the promisor if he breaches if he goes out of the way right and is not doing according to the agreement or the contract which has been made that is if he breaches a clause in the contract then he determines and organizes so this contract law will help the other party right that is other party should obtain his rights what will be the rights so is this contract law will help to get the rights from the other party so we have understood the concept of law then the sources of law various different sources of law then we have mercantile law mercantile law business law commercial law one and the same right it is that branch of uh, civil laws where it comes under that particular law so what is an agreement an agreement is nothing but where two parties come together in order to do some activity so they will agree upon something in order to do some activity or some business transactions then contract definition and essential of a contract that you are going to study then legal rules as to valid offer and acceptance what are the legal rules which are there for the offer and acceptance what is offer what is acceptance offer means when the 
person, the one party, he offers to do something to the other party. Then the other party, the has to accept what the offer is been made. So all that, what are the uh, rules which is there for offer and acceptance that you are going to study. Then termination of an offer. If the offer is been terminated, it is been disqualified. Then how the termination offer can be done, right? It may be like why the termination of an offer has been done. It may be like due to the timings or validity time or period, right? If the other party doesn't accept it like this, there are so many things about the termination of an offer that you are going to study. Now coming to the next unit that is contractual capacity. See contractual capacity is nothing but it is the person, if a person wants to enter into a contract, right? He should be competent enough to enter into a contract where he should be a major who has attained the age of 18 years and he should be a sound minded person and he should not be uh, formulated by any of the laws. So that person can be entered into a contract as a competent and and he has a capacity to do that agreement or the contract. Then what are the minus agreement? So there may be, there are so many agreements made between the minor. So that you are going to study under that. Then consideration, definition, meaning of consideration. Then essential and exceptions. Then free concern under that coercion, under influence, fraud, misrepresentation, mistake that is you are going to study about the definition and features of mistake. So these are the various topics which you are going to cover under this chapter that is second unit contractual capacity. Coming to the contingent contract. So here you will understand what is the meaning of contingent contract, then what is the meaning of quasi contracts, wagering agreements, discharge of contract, remedies for breach of contract. So these are the various uh, subtopics which will be covering under this contingent contract. Next is Intellectual Property Act. So under this you will be studying the meaning, the concept of Intellectual Property Act, the definition and the registration procedure for a patent. So how the procedure should be followed or what are the procedures should be followed uh, for getting the patent registered. What is a patent? That is the rights which is given for the new invention or a new product which has been produced, right? Then copyrights. What is a copyright? It is a right which has been given to the publisher who is publishing his book. Then trademarks. Trademarks nothing but are the trademarks where the manufacturer can use it on his product. So all this you will be studying under this particular chapter. The next is Information Technology Act 2000. So under this students, you are going to study the definition of information. What is an information, right? Then digital signature. What is digital signature? Then legal recognition of electronic records. License to issue digital signature certificate and acceptance of digital signature. So these are the various subtopics which you are going to study under this, under the unit Information Technology Act 2000. Now coming to the next unit that is Competition Protection Act. Under this you are going to study about the introduction of this Competition Protection Act, then the definitions of Competition Protection Act, then prohibition of agreements, anti-competitive agreements, prohibition of abuse and dormant position, then regulation of combinations. So all this you will be studying under this particular unit. And also there are some other topics also which you are going to study that is competent commission of India where the central government will be setting up a commission and there will be a chairperson and the members and who will be looking into the, the inquiry part regarding this particular act. Then duties and powers of the commission. What are the duties? What are the powers of the commission? That is it may be uh, on the chairperson or the members who are there. Then inquiry into combination by commission procedure. Then division of enterprises enjoying dominant position. So these are the various uh, chapters or the units which you are going to study in this particular subject that is under business law. Now students, the books for reference. 
So if you want to refer some books related to this business law, then you can refer these books known as Mercantile Law, which has been published by N.D. Kapoor, Business Law by P.C. Tulsian, then Mercantile Law by P.P.S. Gonong. The students coming to the internals, as you all know, you have interns for 20 marks. You will be writing your exam for 80 marks only and remaining 20 marks will be for internals. So in the internal section, it has been divided into three parts. So internal one, internal two and internal three. So on the internals one, two chapters will be covered under for internals one. That is contract and contractual capacity. For internal two, again, there will be two chapters. That is contingent contract and intellectual property act. And for the internals three, information technology act 2000 and competition protection act 2002. So here the final marks will be awarded based on the three internals, right? Now coming to the question paper pattern. So in this, the question paper will be set for three sections or three parts. That is part A, part B and part C. In part A, 15 marks where you need to answer two questions. So it, you get 30 marks. Part B, three questions which carries 10 marks, 30. Then part C, four questions, five marks, 20 marks, totally 80 marks. Now chapter wise, how the marks has been allotted. For the contract first unit, 15 plus 10 plus five. So 30 marks. For unit two, contractual capacity, 15 plus five, 20 marks. Contingent contracts, 15 plus 10 plus five, 30 marks. Intellectual property rights, 15 plus 10 plus five, 30 marks. Then Information Technology Act, 10 plus five, 15 marks. Competition Protection Act 10 plus 5, 15 marks. So this is how the marks allotment is done on based on chapters. Now after studying this particular subject in this semester, what is your learning outcome? So what you are going to gain from this subject? Learning outcome, this subject facilitates students to understand legislations and various provisions of contract act in respect of business situations, intellectual, Property Act, then Competition Act 2000, as well as Information Technology Act. So students, I think you understood the today's introduction class, which is related to your syllabus part, which I explained to you about the syllabus. Then secondly, about the internals. Then thirdly, question paper pattern and the learning outcomes, as well as how the total chapters in your syllabus uh, where the marks has been allotted. So I hope you have understood the introduction class. I wish you all the best for the semester. Do well. Take care. Thank you students.